you know, when you're first taking a grip, you're vulnerable. You know, that's what we want to work on first. Uh, I don't want to get thrown as I tie up. We're going to start with a right-sided fighter versus a right-sided fighter. So after we bow, I step forward. And what I want to do is get my power hand set, which in the case of a right-handed fighter is my right hand. If I'm a, a shorter opponent in stature, I'll probably be gripping lapel. If I'm taller, I might be getting a collar grip up here, like this. But I want to get that hand set uh, in order to affect my right-sided techniques. So what I do after we bow, I keep this shoulder back. Why? Because he's got to overreach to get it. I'll, I'll tell you why that is in a second. But the first thing I do is I cross grab right here. Because if he's a righty, and I can usually tell a righty by their stance, this prevents him from coming in and throwing me off the grip. So if I get my grip right here, go ahead and throw right. You know, It's very difficult because you see what I'm doing. I'm killing this side right here. He can't make that turn easily. And in the meantime, I'm getting my grip set. And now, if I've killed his right hand, his power hand, and I've set my power hand, this contest is 80-20 in my favor. Can you understand what I'm talking about? Go ahead and throw right side, you know, forward. <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right, well now it's, yeah. I, I was releasing the bastard. Anyway, <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? As long as I maintain that position and kill that power hand, I've taken away 80% of his judo. And, you know, I, I still got to watch out for the occasional guy that's ambidextrous and can fight left-sided. The chances are, if I know the guy, I know he's a right-handed fighter, I've taken away 80% of his stand-up judo. And oftentimes, either I'm going to throw from a superior grip, or I'm forcing him to throw to his worst side. I'm forcing him out of desperation, maybe to throw left-sided without being set for it without having a proper grip for it. So let's look at it again, and I'm gonna have you guys stand up. Uh, the pattern I'm gonna do today, we're gonna start with this gripping, but I don't wanna leave it there. I wanna get these crash pads out. I want you guys to get a superior grip. We're gonna go through the grip break and all that. When he tries to tug to release it, for example, we're gonna throw on Sotogari, or a, a favorite forward throw onto the crash pad, all right? We're gonna link the grip breaks in our superior grip to a throw. Those two have to be together, all right? So I bow, I hold this shoulder back so he has to overreach a little bit to get it. And maybe as he overreaches, I peel this down. And even if he gets a grip right here, he's starting to get a grip. I grip right here. I release this hand momentarily. And here's the action. I'm doing this with my hand. And at the same time, I'm peeling that hand down and pulling it in right here. If I leave it out here, as you saw, he's going to throw. You see what I mean? He's going to spin, do something like Seonagi. So the minute I break that grip, I want to pull it into my stomach area. So I'm right here. I cross grab. He's reaching, even if he gets it. I peel it down and pull it in right here. You see what I'm saying? Now from there, oftentimes, uh, I can throw a favorite technique. Oftentimes what happens, they try to yank this, this hand back. So he's yanking it. There's your Osoda right here. You know, I'm going to use that moment to throw Osoda guard, for example, or another rear throw. Okay? So you've got to be aware of those reactions from your opponent. Let's look at it from this angle. So I bow, I come out, I cross grab. Okay? He reaches. I'm going to get this grip right here, the sweet grip, peel it down, pull it into my stomach, set my right power hand right here. Okay? Pull this into your stomach. Now from here, I can do my forward judo. I can do, you know, uh, throwing to the rear, uh, whatever I want. All right? Now again, right side versus right side. That's what we're looking at. As I come out, I can even get it before he gets the, the lapel right here. That's even better. So I'm here, he reaches out, peel it, pull it in, right here. All right? And then make an attack. All right? Let's give it a try. Call me if you have trouble with this. 
The only stupid question is the one you don't ask. So, you know, feel free. Ask me a question. Everybody got this? I saw one thing. Uh, since nobody's, uh, everybody's got a spirit of timidity going this morning, I'm going to uh, take the liberty of see, uh, making a few corrections. As I come out, I see guys, you know, with an arm extended. Well, first of all, it's an, a standing arm lock waiting to happen. And if Mike decides to throw, this isn't really that powerful. Yeah, he can get in. He can get by that. If you notice when I do it, let's uh, bow in. I come out and I put my forearm right here. Now turn in. You know, and it's very difficult for him now. My whole forearm is blocking this side. For him to make the right side of the tech, you know, I still have to watch out for things like Sasai or the occasional guy that out of desperation might try a, a left drop Sayoi. I've got to be cognizant of that stuff. I've got to be aware. So anyway, once I get this though, I'm blocking with my forearm right here. Let's talk about this part. And Mike has a nice big D. Some of the competitors tailor their D down to the exact legal requirement, which is smart, you know, which you might only have that much D. Mike's got a nice big bunch of D. I'm doing this, and I'm releasing my right hand, and I'm combining these two actions along with thrusting my hips forward simultaneously. <clears throat> now, so you got this, this uh, downward action of the left hand, and this, simultaneous, along with thrusting my hips forward, which gives me additional power. And then I pull it in. Now, if those three movements are separate, I go one, two, three, my power is divided by three. You want all those things to be together, right there, at the same time. And then don't hesitate, whatever you uh, want to attack with from there that you normally attack from your standard right side grip, all right? Just another minute or two. I'm not gonna let you go for too long, but get used to using the forearm, trying to consolidate those three movements, this, this, and this, simultaneously. By the way, this is a, a skill that I learned from a man named Steve Cohen, and he was a many-time national champion from middleweight all the way to heavyweight, and, uh, a great judo player, and I learned this from him a long time ago as he was preparing for, what was it, the 88 Olympics in Seoul. I was his training partner, although I was the coach at the Olympic Center there, I ended up being Steve's training partner and he would throw me repeatedly onto the crash pad. You know, we did this for an hour, even with the crash pad. You know, it gets to be old, you know, up, down, up, down. But in exchange, I learned some of his gripping style. He was one of the best grippers in the United States. People had a, a lot of difficulty getting through Steve Cohen's gripping, and uh, probably still do today. He's still with us. So anyway, that's where it came from, and give it a shot. Let's go with it. One question. Yeah, sure. Any kind of suggestions or tips for that long journey out there to grab the inside of Yeah, that's a good point. This your horrible judo, didn't you say? Yeah, that's awful. Awesome. <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> that's a horrible judo. Anyway, as you come out, sometimes if, if his gi is still close to his body, yeah. and as we start to fight, the gi gets looser. Sometimes I'll open it up with my left hand and feed the right hand in, right here. Now, if his gi is in disarray already, you know, no problem, you can reach out and get it. If it's tight like that, yeah, sometimes I'll reach and then, and then put this hand in. And as he reaches for me, then I'll feel it and begin to fight from a superior grip. That was a good question, though. So play with this just a little bit, then we'll come back, and as soon as I can today, I'm gonna to show you two different skills first. We're gonna get those crash pads, and we're gonna link these grip breaks and uh, grip fighting to the actual throw. That's the only time it's worth anything. We don't get a superior grip and go, neither, neither, I got a superior grip. We don't get points for that. We've got to score. And those two skills have to be closely linked together. Those transitions have to be smooth. That's what we're gonna do shortly. But let's get this down first. Then I'll show you one more skill when the guy gets your power hand down. What to do in that case. And then from there, we'll head to the crash pads. 
All right, here we go. Okay, now, that was really good. Uh, this time, things don't go so well, and Derek pops my sleeve and brings it down. Now, as he says, I'm in trouble because he's got all his right-sided stuff. i got to do something here quickly. You see my right hand? Before he pulls it into his belly, I bring it right here, and I cross it and grab. I want to free that. There's several different things we can do here. I'll show you mine first, and then I'll show you for those of you that like hip throws, or Tayatoshi, for example, or Osotogari. By the way, I saw a lot of guys doing Osotogari because that's what I attacked with. Uh, that doesn't mean you have to attack with that last bit. Anytime you get your right hand power hand set and you've killed his power hand, I can do any right side of throw. I can go forward, I can go backward, I can use foot techniques. I can do all kinds of stuff when I get that superior grip. So don't just mimic my throw, use your own judo there. All right, but this time, uh, everything went wrong. Derek kills my grip. You know, kill my right hand down. Okay, I can't stay here. So I bring this right away. I circle and come up against his wrist. It's like a wrist lock, everybody. It really is. Right here. And now, I prefer to take my left hand immediately, this one, and I grab underneath, thumb up, fingers down, because the gi hangs down, okay? So I'm gonna hit here and grab. Pull this across. I like to get here, and there's a whole uh, cross grip series from here. I can hit Kochi. I can hit Sasai. I can hit Osoto. Uh, there are ugly throws from a cross grip that they score, and I'm in relatively, relatively little danger of being countered from that cross grip. Now, what are freestyle judo? We're allowed to do this. In IGF, you have three seconds on a cross grip. So if you cross grip, you better be attacking. Just figure on attacking immediately from the cross grip. So he beats my grip right away, all right? If you're righty and he gets that right hand, which is your power hand, down, I've got to circle immediately. And you notice, again, remember what I talked about concentrated power. Here, when I cut my hand free, I'm using my waist, but I'm also coming across fingers down so that I can grab. But when I cut, thumb up, fingers down, simultaneous. I don't want to go yank. I've divided my power by 50%. So immediately cut, grab right here. That looks good for right there. This looks good. I don't know, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do from that cross grip, right? You guys who will see know how to do various what are the Tamiyo uh, Kuyanagi yeah, chair throw? Yeah, chair throws, yeah, yeah. Chair throw, whatever terminology you want. But anyway, let's, let's try that because things don't always go according to plan. We're not fighting an inanimate object here. You know, this guy has ideas of winning. Imagine that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he wants to win. He kills your power hand, all right? We gotta act right away. Circle, cut, and cross grab. This Take cross grab, again, I always see people fingers up, but why don't I do that? Because there's not much to grab. The gi hangs down because of gravity. There's the gi. So I have a much better chance of smacking and grabbing if I go thumb up, fingers down. Pull it across. I can use two hands. You know, close the gap of the two. All right. Notice how when he closes that gap, my elbow is bent. It's close to my body, and my wrist is now like right welded onto his chest. Yes. That is all true. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's true. Okay, here we go. Let's go. That first one. Use your whole forearm so he can't turn in right side on you. Now, he can't go left like that. But yeah, it begins to right. <laughs> So I'm right here, blocking his right shoulder. I get my sleeve grip right here. Remember, as I force it down, concentrated effort. I'm going to hit this. So as I release here, I hit it. Okay? And I'm going to pull it into my stomach. Now, 
Derek is probably going to try to get that arm back, you know, so when he pulls, that's an ideal time to hop in and make your attack. And that's what I want you to set up for this one. He can do several different things, but this time we're setting up that one particular thing where he's trying to get his arm back and he's yanking. And we're going to follow him into Osoto as he's pulling that way. That's where we're going to take him. I want you to set that up on the crash pad. So if the crash pad is right here, and uh, I get this, he starts pulling back. That's my opportunity. I'm going to step. I'm going to make my throw onto the crash pad. We've got three crash pads. Uh, let's do it that side. Let's have some people rehearsing down here, and other people throwing on the crash pad, however you want it, Derek. OK. Set it up how you want it. Uh, let's put like two down there and one here. <laughs> Seonagi than I do. I don't do Seonagi. If I did a low Seonagi, I'd need a crane to hook up to my belt and pull me back to my feet. So I'm but, uh, uh, so. <laughs> but anyway, we're over here, and let's say he's killing my, my uh, sleeve right here. One possibility is simply to circle and move in, as you know. Donnie, you, you do that well, I'm sure. So he's killed your power hand. And rather than let that happen, Donnie's going to circle and look at the arm trapped between the bodies. And Don moves in. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do it complete. Hard, complete. <laughs> Don't land. Give it everything you got, man. Sure. You're okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. You see how? Uh, let's just pause right there so everybody can see. Now, he looks at this as fundamental, and it is very fundamental, but there's some people that don't know that. And uh, you got to know this if you're a Serenagi fighter. So he is not going to throw Serenagi if he can't move this shoulder and get in. So if Derek did either that or he's got the sleeve grip and he pulls it into the stomach, now Serenagi isn't happening. So before Derek pulled, before the guy pulls your right hand into his stomach and gets complete control, Don is going to circle and he's going to just continue on. Why, why do anything else? If you can get to there, that's what we want. See Derek's arm is trapped between their bodies. This is Derek's hand right there. His, this is his arm. He can't do anything with it. Go ahead and complete. There it is. There's your, there's your big score. All right? And the great thing about this, too, is that if you're smart and you let go of the grip because you know what he's doing, he still gets your arm. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, the taller guys, this is not going to work for 
I'm sorry, I don't know your name. All Scott. I know, Scott. Yeah. It's better than saying I have horrible judo. You know, <laughs> you yeah, have horrible judo. You have horrible judo. You, you, you won't do this. Horrible judo. I can't call you that all day. Yeah, so he did. Okay. Now, Scott, this isn't going to work for somebody of your stature. Again, you know, you look at your attributes also. The tall, lanky, you know, Uchimata, Paraidoshi. Those type of throws, I bet you got, or Tayatoshi, maybe. I don't know what you favor, but something. I, I bet it's not Yipon Seonai, right? So what we're going to do is we get this, we got our, our grip right here, and we go. Whatever our forward throw happens to be, we're going to use that moment that we have superior uh, grip right here. We're going to get our grip, and we're going to turn and make that throw. All right? So if you're a taller guy, I'd prefer you doing uh, something like Tayatoshi or... Uh, or Harai Goshi or Uchimata, right? Now let's see, uh, who does a good Tayatoshi? Derek, you do Tayatoshi. So that first movement, he's killing your sleeve. Rather than Ippon Seonagi, <coughs> ah, we're going to stick with Ippon Seonagi in just a forward throw right now. I'll just take a break. I'll come back. I'm going to have him climb the opposite of hell and throw Tayatoshi from that position. Partner up and uh, Get the crash pads. I want you to circle straight into Ippon Tsunagi. Make the throw onto the crash pad. Time to hardwire these into your brain. Uh, but we don't have much time. I, I want to get to uh, how you create a system of attack today around your favorite throw. And that's, that's very important. Uh, we're not going to get to everything. Uh, I better move. Well, I, I want to show one more thing right against right. So, uh, Donnie, if I can. Yeah, where's Johnny right here? Okay, get where you can see, guys. So he traps my right hand, all right? And here it is, and before he pulls it in, I'm gonna circle, but he's so strong. I need to get to this other lapel right here, and climb, climb, climb. You can see what I'm doing? Look at his hand. Now, I can throw, say, a Tosh from here, Eric. Uh, I can throw a soda from there, but what often will happen is, this guy will re-grip, you know? Even if he doesn't, I can turn in here, or I can throw a soto from here, you know, with a little power grip, okay? So, the key is, immediately, before he's hip to what you're doing, we're gonna circle, we're gonna use this opposite key. See how I'm shimmying up there? But the whole time, I'm keying on this right shoulder so he can't turn in and throw me. That's important, okay? Now, I only got three seconds to make an attack right here. So I like to step forward, hit a Soto. Some of you guys can hit like Sayatoshi or whatever. Eric, I saw a couple great Sayatoshis here. Or uh, Tayatoshi works very well, all right? Does everybody have one of those techniques? You know, you could do a Sayonagi, you know, from, from this kind of a grip right here, a Morote. Seonai, also, okay? So real quick again, he's killed my right arm. Before he pulls it in, I circle. But he's strong, so I, I use this lapel to shimmy up. I'm still keying on that right shoulder. Try to attack right, you know, it's, it's a crappy position. <laughs> yeah, okay? So right here, you can turn forward, you can throw to the rear, right here, and make your attack, all right? Go to it, guys. Come on, Andy. Yeah. And this is the last one I was going to show right versus left. That'll have to wait. But Mr. Scott, best coach in the country, he can show you left versus right anytime. Uh, right now, I'm showing same side fight. There's a whole different set of skills for left versus right, right versus left. So he's got my sleeve. He's killing my sleeve now. Now, I'm going to circle, and you see how I'm getting to this. Bit, don't have to, you know, right there. Once I get to here, it's like climbing a rope. Look what's happening to his wrist. See where it is? Even if he doesn't let go, but I just shimmied up. I went one, two, three, four, like that. That's what I'm doing. Oftentimes the guy lets go. That's a beautiful time to come in for any type of throw. When that guy lets go to re-grip, that's where your pawns are coming. When these guys let go, but they won't come 
unless you link the grip break with the attack. Because what we do in practice is what we're going to do in a fight. We're not going to do any more than that or any less. Whatever we practice all the time is what we're going to pull out when it counts in a contest. All right? So I want you to practice that. Think about climbing that rope. Uh, Donnie, I'll do it with Donnie also. So Scott can see. So I circle. I open up this lapel. And, you know, I've got a key on that right shoulder, so I'm not going to toss during this whole thing. So if he comes in, I've got two hands right here. Most guys regrip. That's your opportunity right there to come in and throw it, see? All right? Okay. Practice that, and then we're going to move on. Uh, we're going to take your favorite technique and try to build a series around it all in 20 minutes. Okay? Good luck. If you've got a favorite technique, you notice I want to give a good grip, a grip that I favor for Osoto. Uh, let's start with that. Let's look at Osoto. So I've got the Osoto itself, or in competition very often you're doing a replacement step Osoto. We're like, I'm going to hook my right foot first and hop a circle. So when I do that, this back foot, you want your legs to be loose, back foot comes in and then I hop the circle. And the whole time I'm hopping that circle, I'm trying to reap. And that helps pull me around the circle. But that's relatively safe if you've got control here of this, this hand, however it may be. you got this grip. Now, once I have that, the Osoto is more in my favor. I won't attack a Soto if he has a, a power hand grip, either on the lapel or the collar. Because to do so, you know, it's 50-50. He's, well, yeah, he can do some Samba stuff, or he can just throw me Osoto. Because, you know, he's got his power hand, too. And you guys need to start thinking in terms of percentages. If I kill his power hand, then it's 80-20, my favor. That's, those are the percentages I want to make an attack. So right now, I feel fairly good to hop. I feel like I'm going to win that encounter because I've killed this. All right? That being said, that's Osoto. Make sure you've killed the power hand. All right? Now, let's say when I go to do my Osoto, he steps back. Okay, I have choices. Ochi is a good one. All right? Again, I killed the power hand. He steps back. I like to do Sasai. Okay? I love Sasai. Steve, uh, Steve Scott, my dear friend, has taught a lot of Uchimata. So I, I hope that he steps quiet. This is a time for Uchimata right there. All right? Uh, I'm just giving an overview. I know this is way too much. If you're just starting out to absorb, I'm trying to give you the overview uh, because there's only 10 minutes left, 12 minutes, something like that. So I get into Soto, I hop, no, no, no. I hop, 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 but I can't get it, and he starts to raise out of it. No, 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 no. Try to raise it like a hop, and I'm going to clip the back leg. So I get to Osoto, I get to here. Let's do it again. I've got to slow down that spot. I get to here, he starts to lift out. I'm going to hook right there. That's a slam, and it requires total commitment in, in total angle of attack or lean into that, total commitment into that throw. Uh, which of those do you guys already do? Many of these. Are you thinking of it? What I do is I take my notebook paper and uh, I put Osoto in the middle of a circle right here. And then I have an arrow going off to, uh, you know, something to this side, to Ochi. Then I have Sasai, an arrow going off to this direction, that's the side. Uh, I also do Osoto to Harai Goshi, you know, to this corner. You know, here, he pushes in, I turn, make it Harai. All right? That's a good technique. Uh, all of this. So it ends up looking like a, a diagram of an atom or something. Hell, I don't know what an atom a diagram is. <laughs> it sounded good, you know? <laughs> can't dazzle them with brilliance, baffle them with bullshit. But anyway, so uh, that's how you think about it. And I'd like to see you guys stand up 
And I'll we'll try to rotate around there, myself, Mr. Scott, and uh, Sandy, others, uh, Kenny, Don. Let's us walk around, the black belt guys, walk around and help those uh, people. Everybody does a soda guard. But what do you do when they stop your soda guard? Okay? The first step is to develop a favorite technique. One rear throw, one forward throw. An instructor of mine uh, for a couple years was Yoshisada Yonesuka, who we affectionately called Yanni. He was one of the best judo people I ever uh, met with in this country or abroad. And into his, uh, until he was 50, when the U.S. Open camps were occurring in Colorado Springs, he was throwing world medalists in well into his 40s, his late 40s, slamming world and world champions, world medalists, randoring with them and slamming them. He was that good. Now he has an 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of your training time, he felt, should be to develop your favorite technique, rear and forward. In this case, Osoto guard. 80% of your uh, rear throw practice should be devoted to Osoto and developing a strong Osoto with drills, three-man uchi komis, uh, supplemental exercises, all kinds of things to develop the rear throw. The remaining 20% was to develop a small series of supporting techniques around it for when your opponent has scouted you or he, he's just good and he blocks your favorite technique. And then we move to, you know, so Osoto's the number one technique. Uh, Ochi might be number two, Sasai number three, Harai, you know, and so on. We move to the, when he stops the number one, the Osoto, we move to the two, the three, the four. Just like a boxer moves, moves from jab to cross to hook to uppercut, you know, they don't all just go out and jab a guy down or throw a straight right, you know. It's suicidal. You need more than one punch to use in combination. Right? So let's, let's try it. Let's get our own soda. We only got a few more minutes stand-up work. So I want to send you home with a system. I don't, and the same uh, idea to the front. But we're not going to have time to do the front, I don't believe. But get your partner. We don't really need the crash pads for this. Uh, have your opponent, this is the main key in practicing, have your opponent give you realistic reactions. So if you're coming in on Soto, I don't just stand there, you know. I, I react like I do. Here he comes, oh Soto. Or I push into him, he might turn it into a forward throw. Or if I step back, he might hit Ochi, Sasai, whatever. But he's not going to do any of that if I'm, as a training partner, I'm just standing here. Nobody stands here like this in a fight. In a judo fight, no way. Any kind of fight. Okay? Partner up. One, two, three. Okay, so how do you train for a system? You know, I, I have what I call switch uchi -komis. So if I'm going one, two, on three, he steps back, right? So I step for three, he steps back, and hits a side. Or step back again on, on three. Okay. So one, two, step back. He steps back, I hit Ochi on three, see? Or Uchimata or, or whatever. Now, forward throw. All right, Ochi, for example. Uh, so I come in, one, two. Then he's gonna hip block on three, and I switch on three. That's how you develop your series. You start setting up these switches. A couple people like Coach Yigari. I think Don, you were one. Uh -huh. So I'm going to hit a wide enough as though I just spun you a little bit. So I'm going to hit Kochi, one. Kochi, two. He steps back. Coach. Then on three, I switch. You see? But you got to train those. Do those switch at Jacomis. If you do those all the time, you're going to pull them out in a fight. If you don't, there's going to be. Too much hesitation. See? Uh, questions? 